<laughs> well, I never thought you'd find me this time, especially up here. But now that you've crept up me in my yew tree, I can tell you about an emperor who moved from Rome to live in Wales. Where I am now at Cairn near Conway was one of his Roman forts, and he named a road after his wife, Helen, and fished for pearls in the Conway River. But you should have seen his place in Carnarvon. Oh, 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 oh. Maxen Wledig, Emperor of Rome. One day, Maxen Wledig, Emperor of Rome, went hunting. He spent all morning on horseback in a hot river valley and at noon lay down to sleep. To shelter him from the sun, his men propped their shields on spears and laid a golden shield beneath his head. Maxen slept and in his dream, he went on a journey far from Rome. At first, he traveled up the valley until it ended at a high mountain. Beyond the mountain stretched a grassy plain with rivers winding towards the sea. At the mouth of one river, he saw a fleet of ships beside a great city. He crossed over a bridge of walrus tusks to reach the biggest ship, which was made of gold and silver wood. Then he sailed far away towards an island, the finest and fairest in all the world. The west of this new country was rocky, with deep green valleys and blue lakes. From the highest mountain, a river ran down to the sea, and at the river's mouth, the gate of an ornate castle opened wide to welcome him in. In the castle's hall, Maxen saw two young boys playing Gwydbwyll with golden men on a silver board. And on an ivory throne sat their father, carving pieces for the game. Beside him was his daughter, glorious in garments of white and gold. A brooch of red gold pinned her robe, and a girdle of red gold curled about her waist. Upon her head, she wore a golden band clustered with rubies and pearls. Altogether, she was the most beautiful girl that he had ever seen. Of course, just as he was taking her in his arms, Maxen woke up. Sadly, he returned to Rome, and despite being offered the finest wine and the finest song, all he wanted to do was sleep. After a week, the wise men of the city met with the emperor and suggested, for three years, send out envoys to all corners of the world to seek out the maid of your dreams. This idea pleased Maxen, and the men departed. However, they returned after only one year without any news to cheer him. Eventually, Maxen set out himself to find the river valley in which he'd hunted that day. At last he found it, and he dispatched 13 messengers to trace the river to its source among the mountains. To announce the peacefulness of their mission, each man wore one sleeve pinned to the front of his cape. After many months, the travelers returned to Rome. Joyfully, they told the emperor, we have discovered the castle and lady of your dreams, and we will guide you to her over mountain and plain, sea and land. In wonder, Maxen followed them on a journey which was exactly as in his dream. Finally, he reached the island of Britain, which was, as you know, the finest and fairest in all the world, and made for the rocky land of Arvon in the west. 
From the high mountain of Rwidva, or Snowdon, some men call it, a river ran down to the sea. And at the river mouth, the gate of the castle of Abersaint opened wide to welcome him in. In the hall, he saw two boys playing Gwydgwyll, and on an ivory throne sat their father, carving pieces for the game. Beside him was his daughter, glorious in garments of white and gold. Altogether, she was the most beautiful girl that he had ever seen. Of course, just as he was taking her in his arms, but this time, Maxen didn't need to wake up. And for seven years, the emperor lived with his Celtic wife, Ellen, on the island of Britain. After that time, a stranger squatted on the throne of Rome, and Maxen and Ellen left Britain to take back the empire. For one year, they fought from outside the city walls and could not get in. Then Ellen's brothers arrived, and with them, a small host of brave warriors. The brothers had an idea, and they made ladders from the wood of nearby trees. They knew that both sides stopped fighting at noon, so ate early and quaffed alcohol until they were full of high spirits. Then they scaled the ramparts and entered the city whilst the two emperors fed. For three days and three nights, the British fought against the usurping emperor. And when they had slain him and all his followers, the brothers hailed Maxen Wledig, Emperor of Rome. And the gates of the city opened wide to welcome him in. Thank you. 